Hello everyone, my name is Ali Al-Khahtani, I'm a Diabetes Technology Fellow at University of British Columbia and BC Diabetes. First, I would like to thank the Organizing Committee of UBC Division of Endocrinology Annual Research Festival for giving me this opportunity to present our data, and I'm delighted to present on behalf of our research team. In the next 10 minutes or so, I will be talking about data-driven insights about the complex relationship between A1C and GMI. I have no conflict of interest to disclose for this particular talk. And as you all know, glycated hemoglobin or A1C has been the gold standard and the cornerstone of diabetes management for decades and it has been correlated with macro and microvascular complications as shown in the landmark trials DCCT and UKPDS. With the revolution of continuous glucose monitoring, a new matrix has emerged and was called initially estimated A1C, then glucose management indicator or GMI, this metric has been widely used over the past five years, not only by clinicians, but also by patients uh, whenever they are looking at their glycemic control. So GMI was derived from continuous glucose mon monitoring, utilizing the mean glucose, and it is calculated using this formula, as you can see. And this formula actually was derived from linear regression analysis that is conducted by Bergen Stoll and his colleagues uh, in their article, which was published in Diabetes Care 2018, when they have looked at uh, the data of 528 patients uh, from different clinical trials, uh, assessing the efficacy of Dexcom sensors. The A1C GMI discordance is not something new. It has been reported in different studies across various settings, and the rate of clinically significant discordance between A1C and GMI where the difference is greater or equal to 0.5 is ranging anywhere from 26 up to 68%. And this purple line represents Bergenstahl uh, analysis. So the rationale of our analysis that continuous glucose monitoring is rapidly advancing, especially with the integration with automated insulin delivery system. And as a result, we are seeing more of people who have more tight glycemic control. And those particular group of patients are reporting the discrepancy between their, between their A1C and GMI. So at PC Diabetes, uh, there are more than 6,000 patients have used CGM over the past three years. So we thought this is a unique setup that provides an ideal opportunity to re-examine the relationship between A1C uh, and GMI. So our analysis was retrospective IRB approved cohort database query, and our study population were individuals with diabetes, whether type one or type two, using the latest CGM technology, including Dexcom, uh, G6 or G7, and Freestyle Libre 2. The 90-day CGM data were retrieved with the last day coinciding with the date of A1C measurement, and GMI was calculated using Bergenstahl uh, formula that we have uh, presented earlier. And only with uh, only those with sensor use greater or equal to 80% were selected for this analysis. Uh, our outcomes uh, were to compare between GMI value and lab measured A1C and to, to assess the discordance between them. And the discordance was defined as absolute difference between A1C 
and 90 days CGM derived GMI and this discordance more than or equal to 0.5% was considered clinically significant. Let's review the results. Uh, so we've included 1,041 patients in this analysis. The average age was 53 years and 55% of them were men. And the uh, they are equally distributed uh, when it comes to type of diabetes. The duration of diabetes uh, was, uh, the average was around 20 years and the body mass index was 27. Uh, around two thirds of them were using Dexcom, whether G6 or G7, and around one third were using Freestyle Libre. Uh, six, around 60% uh, were using multiple daily injections, and one third of them were using automated insulin delivery systems. The uh, uh, mean available CGM data was, was around 92%, and the average A1C was 7.12, and the average GMI was 7.13, and hemoglobin was 140 gram per liter, and the estimated GFR, GFR was uh, 84. So not surprisingly, the overall correlation between A1C and GMI from statistical perspective is quite strong, as you can see in this scatter plot, with R square of 0 0.703. And if we look at the bland altman analysis, which is another statistical method to assess the discordance, you can see uh, the, the, the upper limit and lower limit of agreement and around 95% of the readings lie in this uh, range. Uh, but if we translate these data into clinical context as shown in this histogram, so this histogram is uh, showing the counts or the number of uh, individuals in the y-axis and the absolute difference uh, in percentage uh, uh, depicted on the uh, x-axis. So as you can see, uh, if we look at 0.5% uh, discordance or more, those individuals have clinically significant discordance. And to further break it down, so we uh, subdivided the discordance into four categories, uh, less than 0.1%, from 0.1 to less than 0.5%, uh, from 0.5 to less than 1%, or uh, greater or equal to 1% discordance. Uh, and we found that around 35% percent of participants had discordance greater or equal to 5.5 percent uh, which uh, is clinically significant. To dig down more in the discordance we broke down the A1C into quartiles. So A1C less than 6, 6 to less than 7, 7 to less than 8 or greater or equal to 8. And we found that the mean absolute difference increases at the extreme, where it is uh, 0.66 in those who have tight control and 0.62 in those with poor control, i.e. having A1C more than 8. And to further uh, describe the direction of discordance, we have done this uh, um, uh, bar chart, which is showing the mean difference rather than the absolute difference. And as you can see, the direction uh, of A1C discordance in those who have tight control is positive. That means that GMI is overestimating A1C in this particular group. So to in a practical term, an individual with A1C of 
might have a GMI of around 6.5. And on the other hand, those who have A1C more than eight, uh, the GMI underestimated A1C. So in a practical terms, someone with A1C of 8.5 might have a, a GMI of 7.9. And that is uh, clinically significant and, and might affect the clinical decision. I know this is a bit busy slide, but it breaks down the discordance even further based on A1C category and level of discordance. And I want you to concentrate on these um, two parts. So 70% of patients with A1C less than six have clinically significant discordance. And 54% of patients with A1C greater or equal to 8%, they have a clinically significant discordance, i.e. greater or equal to 0.5%. Uh, then we ask this question, what led to this discordance? So we have looked at different factors that might play a role in this discordance. We have looked at the age. We have looked at the type of diabetes, CGM wear time, hemoglobin level, estimated GFR, and BMI. And none of them was associated with the with this discordance. We have looked specifically uh, at hypoglycemia, time below range, and we blotted uh, and we blotted it against the discordance, but we didn't find really any significant relationship. Uh, then we looked at the 90 days versus 60 days data and we haven't find any any uh, difference. They're almost identical. So we went further and we have conducted a linear regression analysis and we have developed a new linear regression equation based on our data. And as you can see in this um, uh, slide, the red line represent the old equation or Bergenstahl equation and the blue line uh, represent our new equation. Uh, and the old and new equation are very similar numerically, and uh, it did not reduce the discordance at the extreme of the spectrum, as you can see. Therefore, uh, we plan to explore a nonlinear regression analysis, which might help minimize uh, this discordance. So in conclusion, uh, clinically significant uh, A1C GMI discordance was observed in 35% of our cohort compared to 28% in Bergenstahl analysis. And the discordance between GMI and A1C increases at the extremes of A1C level, with GMI tending to overestimate A1C at lower levels and underestimate it at higher levels. Discordance not explained by hemoglobin, estimated GFR, type of diabetes, 60 versus 90 days data, or BMI, and non-linear regression analysis might help to reduce uh, the discordance. Uh, before I conclude, I would like to thank the research team for their tremendous efforts and dedication to this project, and thank you for listening.